Let's go over parsing integers worksheet number one. In exercise one, um, I trace this to see that num is an integer. And it happens to be initialized to 11. The next line of code works from right to left. So without even seeing what kind of variable num divided by 2 is going to be stored in, into, the computer first divides num by 2. And since they are both integers, it chops off the decimal places. And we all know that 11 divided by 2 is 5.5. But the 0.5 that you get gets chopped off because that's how integer division works. And it's only a 5 that ever makes it into whatever variable is waiting uh, to receive it. Now the fact that that variable is a double doesn't matter because the 0.5 has already been chopped off at the moment of division. So unfortunately you have this big variable result that's an 8-byte variable and can accommodate decimal places, but it never, uh, uh, it never uh, holds the, stores the 0.5. So the end result is that the variable result has a 5. And that's what prints out when we uh, system out print. So on your output screen, simply a 5 will print out. I was just corrected during a timeout that the actual answer uh, is 0. 0.0. You don't have to know that for the AP exam because uh, the, the compiler will show you the accuracy of the variable result. And some guy with the initials CT uh, just uh, pointed that out, even though that's beyond the AP exam. OK, let's do exercise number two. Num is an int again, and it stores 11. Great. Result is ready and waiting for a double. Uh, let's see if a double makes it in there. OK, well, look at the right-hand side of this initialization. The division would be chopping off the 0.5 again, but because we are casting the, the int variable num to a double, it automatically is being upgraded to allow for, well, to, to be treated as 11.0. So the computer is now treating num as 11.0. This is just a temporary operation. It will not affect the actual variable num later on in the program. It's still, a, it's still an int. But for this one line of code, it's a double. So now that you have a 11.0 divided by 2, it is not integer division because they are both not, uh, the numerator and the denominator are not both ints. Because the 1 is a double, the computer will store 5.5 there accurately, and the whole 5.5 will be uh, placed into the variable result. So therefore, when this system out print executes, 5.5 will print out, and uh, your output should uh, be 5.5. Uh, okay, number three. Num is uh, 11 again. And in this situation, we avoid integer division as well, because you have an int divided by a double, what we also call a floating point value. Because the programmer wisely typed a point zero there, even if the programmer would have just typed a decimal place, a decimal point, it still avoids the integer division. Because now the computer behind the scenes is treating this denominator as a double, and the whole division will work out to be 5.5, and the 5.5 will reach the result variable, and therefore uh, we will have 5.5 printed out on the output screen. Result, of course, will store the whole value 5.5. I prefer casting to be used rather than this slick point zero typed in by the programmer. There are situations where you can't put point zero. Obviously, you can't take the variable num and put a point zero after. That, that, that just doesn't work. So it's safest to use casting uh, in, in situations because it's just more flexible. Let's check out these uh, next batch of problems. The AP exam loves to put these in the multiple choice section of the AP test. Plus, they're kind of useful in the real world. Anytime you have a loaf of bread and you, and you slice it up, 
It's called parsing the bread. Well, I just made that up. But anytime you have a digit, anytime you have a big number and you extract the individual digits, it's called parsing in computer science. Or if you have a word, like say the word Charlie, if you take the C and the H and the A out individually, it's called parsing the string. Parsing the number or parsing the string. So let's watch uh, in this exercise how we parse the number 456. Well, uh, on this right hand side here of the equals, we have the famous mod operator. And anytime you take a number divided by 10, the remainder is always the ones digit. Check it out. You got to remember how to do long division. Your second grade teacher might still be available for tutoring. And look, my remainder is 6. And that's the answer, that's the value rather, that's stored in the variable digit here. And that's what makes it to the printout screen, 6. It's amazing. Even if this number was longer, it would have still been 6. The remainder would have still been the ones digit. OK, uh, number 6. Oh, no, number 5. Let's uh, erase some of this chicken scratch here. Long division, you probably could do it in your head if you really had to, hopefully. OK, so uh, here, number uh, 5. Uh, num, of course, you can see is 456, 456. We work from the, the parentheses out. So uh, num mod 100. Well, anytime you mod something by 100, it pulls out the last two digits of the number. So we really have 56 divided by 10 here. And anytime you have integer division in Java, int divided by int, it chops off any decimal places that you have. So 56 divided by 10 is 5.6, of course, but the 0.6 gets chopped off. It's kind of cool, but the 5 is the only digit there that reaches the variable digit. And a lot of times in computer science, we want to do that on purpose. We actually want to either print out or make use of the middle digit, or the tens digit, I should say, of a big number. It is quite common to have to do that kind of parsing in computer science. You people that are hooked on your Facebook or your Twitter, you think this stuff is magic. The fact that it sorts by name or you can uh, retweet this or uh, uh, Friday tweet that, well, guess what? It only works because of algorithms like this. So there. OK, let's look at number six on this uh, worksheet. Uh, another variation of what we just saw. And we have uh, 456 mod 1,000. Even if this number 456 was a bigger number, like 9999956456, this would work out to the last three digits. Just trust me, it always works out. If you want to, you can do long division and see what happens when you have uh, 456 divided by 1,000. It goes into it zero times and your remainder is 456. So it always will be the last three digits. And then 456 integer division with 100. It ends up being 4.56. Uh, no, I'm sorry. Yeah, it ends up being 4.56. When you divide by 100, you just move the decimal two places to the left, you know. So the 0.56 gets chopped off, and it's a 4 that gets stored in the variable digit in this example. So when we system out print digit, 4 is your answer. That is neat. So the rule is that even if you had a bigger number here, like 9999456, this little algorithm here, modding by 1,000 and then integer dividing by 100, always works out to be the last three digits. It's kind of like eating three inches of a hoagie from the right side. Uh, great analogy if that helps you. Uh, Slide me some uh, PayPal donation money. OK, number seven. Number seven. We are first taking 4, 5, 6, and we're dividing it by 10. Well, that chops off the 6 because of integer division. So a 45 gets stored in num2. Next line of code. We have that same 45 integer divided by 10. Well, that ends up being 4.5, and the 0.5 gets chopped off. So it's a 4 that makes it into the variable num3. So again, a 4 is the answer to exercise 7. 
it's kind of the, well, the same output as number six, but just a different way of doing it. You could either choose to use mod, if you had to write code that does this, parsing, or you could just do uh, uh, integer division by 10, uh, two times, to uh, work your way in from the right side and get that third digit in from the right. Last of, uh, almost last, number eight. So we're dividing by 10, so we're chopping off the, the six. And then we're dividing that by 10, so we're chopping off the five. Then we're taking that four that's left, which at that point is stored in num three if you're following me. And that four, because of the order of operations, you do the multiplication first before the subtraction. So four times 100 is 400 here. And then if you have, still have num, now num is still 456. Num never changed. Num2 and num3 were different, but num is still 456. So you end up with 456 minus 400. The answer here that prints out is 56. Again, I parsed a big number and pulled out the tens and the one digit. A different way of getting to the answer uh, than the algorithms before, but this variation you're very apt to see on the AP exam. They love this kind of stuff, where you're supposed to remember the order of operations. Please excuse my multiplication, dear Aunt Sally subtraction. They will not put parentheses in there to make it easy. They will try to catch you uh, at a weak moment on question number 39 of the AP exam when you're hurrying to finish that test in an hour and 15 minutes with 40 questions. They'll try to get you whenever, when you're uh, in a rush. Okay, there's one more exercise I see, number nine, and that's so long and complicated, I'm not in the mood to do it. If you have any questions on this one, just email me at cminic at yoarea.org and reference this video that had to do with parsing integer worksheet number one. I will point out, though, that you have to make sure that you do the multiplication first here uh, in this line of code and here also. In other words, follow the order of operations. I think this exercise reverses. 4, 5, 6. And the answer ends up being 6, 5, 4, but show me the work to get credit. Because on the AP exam, they might name a variable something like, like digits reversed. Instead of num6, they might name it like digits reversed. And the, but then they might have a glitch somewhere in here. So the answer doesn't come out to be digits reversed. And if you fall for their, their bad naming, you might circle that as the answer where the digits are reversed. So they have a way of fooling you with their variable names or their algorithms that almost work but, but don't quite uh, work 100% uh, correctly. Good luck with that one.